Captain Sully Sullenberger is CBS News' is aviation and safety expert. He is with us from Reno, Nevada. Sully, good morning. Good morning to you. Let me begin with this. Uh, when you know as much as you know and been able to determine so far, what does it say to you? What stands out to you? It's very early, but something must have happened that either prevented the pilots from communicating or made them so busy that they couldn't get to a priority as low as talking on the radio. They were trying to maintain control of the airplane or fight a sudden catastrophic emergency, for example. Mm -hmm. And, Captain, now that we have heard from the defense minister the, saying that there were sudden swerved and plunging, he said it went 90 degrees left and then 360 degrees to the right. What does that mean to you? If that's true, yeah. and we'll know a lot more when we find parts of the airplane on the surface and determine if the airplane reached the surface intact or if parts of the airplane had become had begun to come off prior to impact. We'll know even more after the digital flight data recorder and the cockpit voice recorder are found and analyzed. But it might suggest a possible loss of control in flight. And as we've seen with Air France 447 in 2009, that has been a recent cause of accidents. I have read, uh, Captain uh, Sully, that this is the same type of plane that you were flying the day that is now known as the Miracle on the Hudson. What can you tell us about this particular aircraft? Well, it's been in service uh, as a type since 1998. This particular airplane was put into service in 2003. It has about 40,000 hours on its airframe. Uh, it's used worldwide. Uh, it's a very reliable airplane. I know it well. I have about 5,000 hours in that series of airplanes. What is normally happening at 37,000 feet? It's normally a, a routine, calm part mm -hmm. of the flight where the workload is relatively low. In fact, statistically, the cruise portion of the flight is the part of the flight where the risk of an accident is the least. But uh, we'll find out a lot more when we find parts of the airplane in the recorders, of course. Do we need something that we don't have now that communicates when there is an inability of the captain to contact land? Certainly after the disappearance of MH370, there's been a call worldwide for better reporting of airplane position, especially <coughs> over remote parts of the world. This situation appears to have occurred in the position where there was radar coverage, yes. but it was the voice communication that was lost. So I think they'll probably have a pretty good fix on its last position and know about where to start begin looking. Any suggestion that terrorism was involved? It's way too early for that, as Mark Rosinger said. Mm -hmm. Everything at this point should still be on the table. It will be only after the parts of the airplane are found or, or the recorders are found that the focus of the investigation will be able to be narrowed. Who will lead the investigation? The international aviation rules dictate that since this occurred in Egyptian airspace, the Egyptian investigators will lead the uh, uh, investigation. It's already been said that the French will assist since the airplane departed Paris. I realize it's still early and there are a lot of questions, but have you ever heard of a case where a plane disappeared from radar and it was not catastrophic or a crash? Yes. Uh, yeah. There have been a few cases where there are long periods of no communication, but they're extraordinarily rare. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, Captain Sully Sullenberger, always good to see you. Sorry it's under this circumstance, but thank you for joining us.